Please steal these ideas, invest in future youth, talent, and community development. First of all, the good news is we can change America and we can change the world because there are solutions to the problems of school dropout rates, youth unemployment, and juvenile delinquency. We can change the world by launching more programs right. such as Youth Build, which has proven to be one the of, if not the best, you know youth it. development program in the USA. I can change the world. They're all poor. You know, they're used to feeling yeah. marginalized, rejected, yeah. depressed, hopeless, like nobody world. respects yeah. them, nobody cares about them, and there's no hope for them. They walk into Youth Build, and what we want them to feel right away is respect. You're important here. All right, this exercise, we're going to begin to test our trust in each other. All right, so I need all of my ones. You should have a blindfold in your hand. The first Youth Build program was started in 1978 in East Harlem. We had 300 abandoned buildings in East Harlem where I lived. We had hundreds, maybe thousands, of young people standing on the corners with nothing to do, and lots of homeless people. So I looked at that and said, there's something wrong with this picture. Someone should hire these young people to rebuild these buildings and create housing for the homeless people. President Clinton's program is also making strides that have great promise for changing the world. Tonight, there are more than a thousand of you here from more than 300 universities, 82 nations, and all 50 states. You represent your generation, young people who have a greater ability to enact change than any before. We also have successful youth programs such as the Boys and Girls Club of America and Big Brothers and Sister programs that have changed the lives and world for many youth. We need more Boys and Girls Clubs in the USA so we can change America and the world. That's right. You can change the world. You know it. I can change the world. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door. A door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong. A place to forge their future. For 100 years, the Boys and Girls Clubs have opened this door for America's youth. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. And we will change the world when we provide the big brothers and sisters our youth need every day in their lives. This is the Worldwide Day of Play and the Race for Kids all together. There are currently over 425,000 children in New York City in need of a big brother or big sister.
The bad news and the major problem is there are not enough of these programs or resources to serve all the youth who urgently need support services. Hopefully, the current information provided on the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services website on December 8, 2014 that seems to indicate no resources have been allocated for youth development since 2009 is incorrect. At the same time, there is a boom in subsidies to build for profit free slave labor prisons that force state and local governments to keep the crime rate high to keep prison cells full in the USA. The infographic by CNN, Money, Education vs. Prison, provides cost data from 2010 on how much government money was spent in 40 states per year to educate an elementary or secondary school student compared to the cost of keeping an inmate imprisoned. Now, five years later, the money spent on prisons is greater and the money spent on education is less in the USA. Circumstances in Philadelphia may be a typical example of how the public schools are being underfunded to build and generate profits by locking more people up for longer sentences in the for-profit free slave labor prison business. An unelected board refuses to listen, spends more money on a closing plan than on keeping schools open closes schools that have 92% graduation rate, closes schools that are doing well. If you do that, then what choice does community have but to say enough is enough, even if it means getting arrested? Well, she did get arrested, and spoiler alert, she was not successful in her efforts. The schools were still closed. Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, was protesting against Pennsylvania's state-run school reform commission from closing 23 schools across the city of Philadelphia. Late this afternoon, school superintendent William Height detailed who will get pink slips. In all, 3,783 workers are getting layoff notices. That includes 676 teachers. Meanwhile... Governor Corbett has no money for schools. He fished under his cushions and found the cash to build a $400 million prison complex in suburban Philadelphia. The sad reality is that the majority of black and white voters in the USA do not vote for more education, counseling, and job training for our youth, which costs less. Instead, the majority of voters in the USA waste more tax dollars by voting for more police to kill our youth or lock them up for profit, free slave labor crime school prisons. Then, of course, they come back home and commit worse crimes in their community. We have this habit of thinking of prisoners as something very external to society. After all, there are literal walls between them and society, walls capped with razor wire and watched over by people with guns. But millions of prisoners are released each year. Today's prisoners are tomorrow's neighbors, so corrections should probably be the most important piece of the incarceration pie. Unfortunately, it is not. We are, however, really good at punishment. America has about about 4% of the world's people and about 25% of the world's incarcerated people. We have the highest incarceration rate in the world. To make matters worse from a business perspective is that this trend also violates the fundamental law of capitalism, which is that free markets determine profits. Based on that, supposedly, no business in America has been guaranteed a profit. So why are the private free slave labor prisons guaranteed profits now? There are many questions, and it appears that our government has not only abandoned the needs of our youth, the USA also seems to have become increasingly unresponsive to the needs of society and unconcerned about justice. These trends should make all Americans very concerned because the government of the USA is also providing equipment, training, and militarizing the police. Is the USA preparing for cities in the USA to become war zones? If so, against who and what enemy? President Obama has even questioned police use of military gear in Ferguson. Yeah. 
yeah. police in Ferguson protests, armed with military gear better. used in war zones. We'll do it together, Local we'll police do it in Ferguson, better. Missouri, have used military yeah, gear against you protesters you following the shooting of Michael Brown. Officers in Ferguson have been seen wearing camouflage, along with night vision glasses, gas masks, extra magazines and pistols, while some have been sported spotting Marine Corps K-Bar fighting knives. They are dressed in more body armor than some soldiers patrolling war zones wear. Rifles based on the military M4 carbine have also been deployed. The rifle has a 30 round magazine, and its telescopic sight allows users to eye targets at a range of up to 500 meters. Military vehicles are also present at the scene, such as mine resistant ambush protected trucks or MRAPs. Their V shaped hulls are designed to deflect explosions from IEDs. The long range acoustic device, or LRAD, has also been seen. The sonic weapon produces beams of sound the intensity of which varies depending on the distance of the target, and which can reach 120 decibels at 20 meters, equivalent to the noise generated by a jet engine, causing physical pain and possible permanent hearing loss. There are more questions than there are answers, but it is clear that regardless of race, color, or creed, all Americans need to come together and take charge of creating our own futures in the USA. When people in America come together, we will make the USA a real leader and change the world. To do that, all Americans must stand up and start taking personal responsibility for the development and future of our youth and our communities. Fortunately, there are viable solutions that can enable us to do just that. One obvious solution is to launch more youth build programs and rebuild cities like Detroit, Gary, and New Orleans. And since we can do that, we can also change the world when we come together. So you have all of these young people who are hopeless. They're not going to do anything different. They are who they are. Uh, they'll end up in prison, drug addicts, or dead. To be able to turn that around is a powerful thing. Those who are ready, willing, and able can do the same thing all around the country in economically distressed communities where our youth need training and jobs and housing needs to be rehabbed, such as in the city of Chicago. Attorney Lawita Glover is partnering with Paladin Movies International and using the youth build model, an edutainment component that Paladin Movies International developed in Nelson Mandela Bay to launch a Please Steal These Ideas project in Chicago. In 2009, Paladin Movies International accomplished what the experts said was impossible to do in South Africa. By forming a coalition among youth, talent, and a local business owner, Paladin Movies International's efforts resulted in a hotel and a community That's being restored, right. while youth and talent developed their skills the in world. Nelson Mandela Bay. Paladin you Movies it. International also proved that developing youth and talent world. can and does develop yeah. the community. <laughs> As you can see, in these clips, the youth with skills are busy doing rehab work while the talent shows are in progress. In the next clip, Nikita says it all. Um, this is Precious Nikita Dhananda with Ron Benson of Paladin Movies International. We are coming to you from Nassau Mandela Bay in Port Elizabeth, South Africa. This DVD documents what one man with a camera can do. Imagine what government, big business, and their support can do. We hope you will tell all your friends to download this DVD. To start up in Chicago, the first objectives of Attorney Glover's Please Steal These Ideas project are to provide youth who want to develop skills in housing construction with the skills to do weatherization for seniors. Her project will also develop youth with talent 
and youth with artistic skills. In addition, her project will be a model for providing constructive diversion from delinquency for all youth in Chicago. Overall, the primary goal is to teach youth entrepreneurship skills. So you, so you, you all of us, we all, all gonna fly. fly. You all know what we try. We try. We can change, change. The world. That's right. We can change the world. You know it. I can change the world. Yeah. 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 We can change the world.